In this movie we're going to show endovascular salvage of fractured endologic stent graft using a combination of thoracic and uh, abdominal aortic endograft. 68 year old man um, who had massive expansion of an infrarenal aneurysm, he had a prior EVAR, was treated with an endologic stent graft as shown here after a 6 cm AAA. He also had an extension uh, placed in the aortic position some variable time later. He had the usual kind of cone morbidities um, which we associated with patients with aneurysms. Here we're going to show the uh, the CT scan. This is suprarenal fixation, and you can see there's uh, two different stents. There's a proximal extension, um, which is somewhat loose inside the stent uh, of the abdominal component. There was really complete separation and some compression of the distal bifurcated component that we're looking at here. His access was uh, fairly reasonable. This is what it looks like in three dimension. <coughs> and allow this to rotate. You can see the challenges, of course, are going to be making sure that we don't go through the wire frame because this is the stent graft in which the fabric is on the outer aspect of the, um, the, the stent graft itself. And so it was going to be really challenging to make through and through that. This is what it looked like. We started off by doing cone beam CT. This is the rotational study. And then we um, accessed both groins. Um, here we can see we're coming up through the limb. Now again, one of the techniques is to use a formed peg to make sure that you, as best you can tell, it, you don't actually go through the interstices of this. The challenge was going to be that the, the distal component was projecting to patient's left. We're going to have to come all the way back. And I'll tell you what these green lines basically are in a minute. <coughs> um, the green line is the, um, we're using fused images of the cone beam CT. Uh, the red is right renal, left, uh, blue is left renal, celiac and SMA, and the green ring represents the uh, most distal extent of the aortic extension that's present within here. So we had to navigate through two different layers um, of free-floating stent. That, of course, was going to be a problem. And to do this, we opted to choose um, a steerable sheath. <coughs> And the steerable sheath allowed us, because we're projecting the patient's left, to come all the way back to the patient's right. <clears throat> um, and with some difficulty, we actually managed to navigate um, catheter and wire. Again, we, we also tried to use a pigtail catheter. Uh, one of the techniques here is to use a loop within the wire um, to try and make sure that we stay in the luminal. And at this point, we actually managed to get up through the stent graft. However, um, there's still obviously some concern that we pass through the fabric of the stent. And so for this reason, we opted to use a technique kind of called a balloon pullback technique here. We actually expanded up the, um, the compressed distal end or the proximal end of the distal component here um, because it, 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 we were worried about our ability to pass the stent graft up through it. And then what we did actually was took that balloon um, and, put, and it, you can see it hung up a little bit on the end of the stent graft here. <clears throat> And actually, you can see there's a little bit of infolding, so we're very concerned um, that um, it was going through the intestines of the stent. And so for this reason, what we opted to do here <coughs> was to put the sheath and dilator went up through it. And through the sheath and dilator, we then actually brought that balloon uh, back up into position. You'll see it in the next. And what we did was we blew up the balloon. <coughs> um, and then with the inflated balloon, we gradually pulled it back to see whether or not uh, we were going through the interstices of the stent. And I'm glad to say that um, it came back really without too much difficulty. Um, again, they're fairly big pores within these stents, and so there's not entirely sure that, that, that you can be 100% sure this is the case. So we used a conquest balloon to dilate this up. And then we went ahead and opted to realign the internal aspect of this um, with a thoracic stent graft. Um, we also, of course, had to get access from the other side. We went through kind of the same gyrations to make sure that we were not through the, the stent pores, basically, on the other side. Um, however, because of the, the concern with this, we opted to then bring up, um, in this case, a Navion stent graft. And we laid the Navion stent graft inside uh, and this really completely transformed it from uh, because what it did is essentially exclude most of these um, the stent tines. And at that point in time, we then went and laid in an endurant bifurcated graft inside, and it actually went uh, fairly easily once we had relined uh, the in, the entire system. And you can see that's the Navion base is in place. Mm. We dilated up with the proximal distal end, and then we went ahead and placed. The, you can see the bifurcated stent graft uh, being placed inside uh, the Navion, which is now inside and end the logics and this actually went fairly well we dilated this up in a position you can see what the final uh, study actually showed there was a number of different components here that are worthwhile emphasizing i think this just shows complex salvage due to uh, inside free floating bare metal and these are the principles which we demonstrated thank you